Hello everyone and welcome to the part 2 of chapter number 1. In this video we are going to do one of the most important topic of the FM syllabus and that is ratio analysis. The exam weightage of this topic is around 5 to 8 marks and none of the attempts have, have passed in which the examiner has not tested this topic. So you can see the exam significance of this topic. For the ease of learning I have compiled ratios from across the syllabus into this chapter only for better understanding and solid grip on this topic. <coughs> You will also see some examples during the topic uh, in the notes. We will not be doing them right now because these are exam styles and a bit technical. We will be doing that in the last video once we, in the next video, once we are done with the ratio analysis and have a good grip on it. Now, if you come to the page number four, you will see the heading of measuring the achievement of corporate objectives by financial ratios analysis. What are the corporate objectives? We have already learned that in our last video. Now we are moving straight towards the ratios. Ratios are broadly classified into four categories. That's profitability, profitability, liquidity, gearing, and investors ratio. These are the four categories. So let's start with the profitability ratios. The best way to understand uh, the ratio is via a financial statement extract. Firstly, let's see what the first profitability ratio we have. We have got rows return on capital employed or ROI return on investment. It shows how well the company has utilized its assets to generate profit. If you look at the formula, it clearly showed that it's profit before interest and tax. That's operating profit divided by capital employed. Now, capital employed does not necessarily mean only the capital that, also, that is of equity capital. We also take the debt capital. The logic of this formula is that we see how well the company has generated profits by using the same proportion of assets year by year and we can also use it to compare it with industry for example there's another kind of company with a more or less a similar asset figure uh, that is a capital figure <coughs> of equity and debt and it shows it's showing a better uh, res uh, results in term of returns so obviously we can compare it with the industry average as well for now, we are going to the financial statement extract to know to have a better understanding of it. The best way to learn ratio is via computation with a financial statement extract. So let's go to the extract. Okay, we have got the financial statement extract of Henry Co. Let's start with the profitability first profitability ratio, which is rows. That is PBIT divided by capital employed. In this case, uh, what's the PBIT? We are not given PBIT uh, in our financial statement extract. However, we are given with PBT of 110. We are also given with a 50 of interest expense. All we need to do is to add them up and we'll get a PVIT. And the capital in, uh, employed involves all equity. So we have all equity over here and plus long-term liabilities which is over here of 500 let's sum that up in our formula now this will give you a total of 160 divided by 2620 and we need to multiply it with 100 so doing that we get 6.1 now if we do the same with the 2018 we have a PBIT of uh, we have got a profit before tax of 88 and an interest expense of 45 which gives a total of 133 Divided by capital employees, 1500 for 43 and 450 will give you 2393. 
Now, if you compute that and multiply it with 100, we get a figure of 5.5. So that's the rows. If you look at the return on capital employed from 2018 to 2019, you will see that the rows has improved with 0.6%. Means with the same proportion of assets, the company has generated better returns. So it's moving in a right direction and achieving its corporate objectives. That's the rows. Coming back to our notes. Now we have asset turnover. Now asset turnover basically implies how well a company is utilizing its assets to generate the sales. In the last part we were, we were talking about returns. Here we are specifically concerned with sales. It's comparing total sales with total assets that were used to generate those sales. So let's see how, to, uh, how it works. The formula is sales divided by capital employed. Now let's use that in our financial statement extract. Now we have asset turnover which is sales divided by capital employed. We already know what capital employed is. The sales figure which we are given over here in 2019 is 500. So let's put that in our formula. So it's 500. And divide by capital employed, we have already computed the capital employed that is 2620. Now, if we divide 500 with 2620 and multiply it with 100, we get 19% or 2019. Now, doing the same for 2018, we get 450 is the revenue and we have already computed the uh, capital employed multiplying with 100 will give us around 18.8 percent so the asset turnover has also improved with 0.2 percent not with a great figure not with a great margin but with a small percentage however there is an improvement which shows that the company is taking steps to improve this area to improve the sales. Moving on to our notes. We have our next ratio is operating profit margin. It's basically uh, margin involves uh, sales, operating profit over sales. It will it tells us how well the operating profit is earned in relation to the sales. So let's uh, lo look at that also in our example. The formula, let's first like, look at the formula that is operating profit. That's profit before interest and tax over sales. Now we have operating profit. Now operating profit involves operating profit uh, or that is operating profit margin involves operating profit over sales. We have already compute our operating profits of 160 and now we use uh, and the sales were 500. Now if we compute that and multiply it with 100 we get a figure of 32% for 2019 now doing the same for 2018 
over 450 is giving us a 29 percent so again the operating, of operating profit margin has improved so with uh, around 3 percent so it, it shows that the company is moving in the right direction towards achieving its corporate objectives now operating profit uh, is simply a margin which is com comparing our return with the sales uh, and it's basically focusing our analysis to the parts in between that is the admin cost and uh, salary expenses uh, so if those costs are or cost of capital so or cost of sales that is so if these costs are reducing this power margin will increase that's the logic behind it moving on to our next in the notes we have got return on equity now rows and return on equity are the most favorite topics of the examiner to so pay very close attention to these topics ROE represents the amount of net income return as a percentage of shareholders equity now we are uh, not uh, taking whole of the financial statement as an objective here we are looking strictly from a shareholder a simple shareholder perspective in which a profit after tax and different dividend is taken that is profit after tax which means all the expenses of the business are being deducted and we also deduct the preference shares this is the amount which the shareholders have actually earned and they are actually getting from the company in a year so and we are now dividing that with the shareholders fund that is the total amount of capital which is invested by the shareholders it involves the basically the equity part that is the shareholder shares and also the reserve part that is previously unused reserved reserves so let's put that in our example we have now ROE that is profit after tax over shareholders funds now profit after tax for 2019 is 77 so that will be 77 and the shareholder fund is for 2019 is 1500 over 620 so if we compute 1500 plus 620 in our figure we get 77 over 2120 multiply with 100 and we get 3.6 percent doing the same for 2018 is we have a profit after tax of 62 divided by total equity of 1548 will give you 1943 that is and multiplying it with 100 will give you 3.1 percent so there is uh, definitely an increase on ROE but with not a great margin if you look at the figures it's only 0.5 percent increase however there is an increase which means that the company is still in a profitable position is still in a good position to give anything to the shareholders the next ratio that we have is gross profit margin now gross profit margin shows how much gross profit is earned in relation to the sales and then we have a net profit margin which shows how much net profit is earned in relation to the sales now there is a difference between these two uh, from the sales we deduct cost of sales to arrive at a gross profit now this ratio is comparing that profit which is the gross profit with the sales in between there is only one thing and that is cost of sales if that cost is reduced that the cost of sales is reducing mean give will give you a good ratio the gross profit margin 
and if the cost of sales is increasing this will deplete the gross profit margin so if you look at the from PNL you'll see that there is a revenue sales and after that we have cost of sales we have got a gross profit and we are comparing gross profit with the sales in the gross profit margin in the net profit margin however we are taking net profit that is profit after tax and then using it to compare it with sales So anything that comes uh, in between, any cost, if the cost is reducing, anything that comes in between will instantly have a no positive or negative effect in the ratios. If admin cost is increasing, it will have a negative effect on this. If salary uh, expense is increasing, it will deplete that net profit margin ratio. So let's compute that in our example as well. First, we have a gross profit margin GBM, which is gross profit over sales multiplied by 100. The gross profit for 2019 is 200 over sales revenue of 500. Multiplying it 100 will give you 40%. Now, doing the same for 2018, we have a gross profit of 170 over sales of 450 multiplying with 100 we will getting 38 percent and at the same time let's compute that of net profit margin we have a net profit over sales multiplying with 100 we have a net profit of 77 now we are using sales of 500 multiplying with 100 will give you 15.4 percent doing the same for 2018 we have got a net profit of 62 divided by in sale of 450 is giving us a figure of 13.7 percent so with gross profit margin and net profit margin you can see that they are increasing the net the gross profit margin it has improved from 38% to 40% during a 2% increase which means that the company has managed to reduce the cost of sales after that we have got a net profit margin which has also dramatically improved from 13% to 15.4% which shows that the company has reduced all the costs in between that is salary, admin and uh, cost of sales. The whole proportion of the cost is being used in between. So if they are all being reduced in a minor process, uh, perhaps more, perhaps less, but they are, the company did manage to reduce the cost proportion when comparing it with the last year, which, is, which has increased our net profit margin. So that's the profitability ratios. As you can see it's mainly concerned with the PNL part. However, from the extract, from the analysis, we can clearly see that from the profitability corporate objective, the company is moving in the right direction. The Henry Co is moving in the right direction. Now let's move on to our next ratios, which is the liquidity ratios. The first liquidity ratio that comes over here is uh, current ratio. Now, from the liquidity ratios term, you must be wondering what liquidity, uh, what liquidity is. Liquidity is basically concerned with the receivables, payables, cash, and inventory. So that's all the whole of working capital area. So we are now looking how well the company is equipped to deal with its current portion 
the, the current liabilities and asset portion, the current portion, the, the things happening in a one year time. So first up we have a current ratio. Now current ratio simple formula is current assets over current liability. From the formula you can see what we are comparing. We are comparing assets with the liabilities. <coughs> Anything in excess of one will be good. That is the company can pay its liabilities. Anything in less than one means that the liability, the denominator has increased and the numerator has decreased, which which will create a problem for the company. There will be crisis in the company. So anything in excess of one is good. Anything less than one is bad. That's the basic rule. After that, we have got a quick ratio. Now, quick ratio is current assets. Let's talk over current liabilities. Some experts have argued that this is a better ratio. Uh, for analysis because an inventory is a biased figure it can sometimes include things which are absolute so they have a perspective that this is a better formula in this area we are computing current assets with the current liabilities now current assets uh, involves cash and receivables and the current liabilities could be payable on anything which we have to pay in a short term and we are <coughs> removing stock or inventory from our computation in this ratio so that we can compare the liquid part with each other uh, it could be it can uh, be it is acceptable up to 0.5 anything less than 0.5 means that the company is in danger zone so let's uh, include them in our financial statement extract Now we are doing liquidity ratios and the first one is <coughs> and the first one was current ratio which is current assets over current liabilities and we have also covered simultaneously quick ratio the, the second name for the quick ratio is asset test ratio in this ratio we are deducting inventory that is less inventory or stocks divided by current liabilities let's compute them with our extract firstly we have need to have all the current assets the, all the current assets in our financial statement extract for 2019 are these figures and the current liabilities portion only has a payable Okay, now we have a 150, 105 plus 215 divided by 150. Now the total, the sum of all these will give you 470 less divided by 150. Now this is a ratio in time so we will not be multiplying with 100 don't make this silly mistake in the exam the it will become 3.1 doing the same for 2018 we have got 438 of total current assets dividing by with 145 of current liabilities computing it and we have a 3 Three. So the current ratio is showing that the company is able to pay the liabilities three times which it has now. So from the current assets perspective, there are current assets with the company which are in value three times more than the liabilities. This is what this ratio is showing. There has been no improvement. In this area 3.1 is not a big improvement so it's pretty much the same which uh, shows that the company need to do work in this area now doing the same for quick ratio we have we have already computed all the current assets that is 470 now we are removing the inventory of 105 
right by the same current liabilities figure. Now, if you compute that, we are getting the figure of 2, doing the same for 2018. That is 438 less 95 over 145 is giving us 2. Again, a tie which showing that the company has not made any progress in this area. It seems that the company is not focused in its current part. However, there is no problem uh, with, the, uh, with these ratios. The company is pretty much capable of settling its current liabilities. It does not need to have any concentration in this area. The uh, quick ratio is also showing a significant, uh, you can say, bigger of 2. Uh, it, uh, the, the least which we can expect from a company is 0.5 and it again has a three time three fold uh, figure which means that it can set off its current life it has enough liquid assets in store to set off its current liabilities after that let's move on to our next ratio working capital turnover now this ratio measures how much support the working capital is giving to the sales figure. Uh, we are comparing the sales revenue in the numerator with the current asset and liabilities, the net portion of the current assets, uh, that is current assets less liabilities with the sales. Let's put that in an example. Working capital turnover, we have a sales divided by current assets over current liabilities. Now we have got a 500, 470 over 150. Sales is the sales is the current uh, of uh, 2019 sales figure is 500. Current assets is 470. We have already computed that in the current ratio part. And we have got a current liability of 150. Computing all this, we have got working capital turnover of 1.5. Computing the same for last year, 450 was the sales revenue, current assets were 438, and 145 was the liability. Computing the same again, there is a tie of 1.5. Uh, it seems that the company has has got a steady, strict policy when it comes to working capital area. They are managing the same proportion year by year, which is uh, somewhat a good thing because they are more concerned with the security of the company. Because if the company cannot pay off its creditors, it will eventually have to file for protection from the creditors and become solvent. So it's a good strategy or keeping enough current assets to support its sales. The next, uh, let's come on to the next ratio of liquidity. Here we have got the inventory operating cycle ratios. These, the basic inventory operating ratios, uh, ratio is inventory over cost of sale multiplied by 365 days. The, this ratio is in days, it's not in percentage, it's not in time, it's in days. So, the lesser the days for the inventory and receivables, the better. Where we will be doing the receivable ratio as well, and after that we get a payable ratio. The more the uh, after they got a payable ratio, the however the inventory comes to payable, an increase in number of days is a good sign because we have used that finance, uh, use the credit as a source of finance for the company. Now. Firstly, let's start with the inventory ratio. It shows an average number of days inventory is held in our premises. So there are a number of ratios for different types of inventory. Uh, this will be this can be used according to the exam instructions. However, the basic inventory turnover ratio is inventory over cost of sales multiplied by 365 days. We will be doing that in our extract. 
we also have uh, receivable collection period again is a very simple formula we are using receivable and over credit sales in our structure we will be assuming that the entire sales on credit so we will be using sales figure over 365 and multiplying with 365 now receivable uh, shows the every number of days the company uh, has kept its receivable <coughs> the less of the days the better after that we have got account payable again we will be comparing now here we will be comparing purchases or cost of sales with the payables portion because uh, whatever we purchase we have to pay for them assuming all our purchases are on credit so, uh, so we will be uh, making a payable standing a payable in accounts for that so we will be comparing payables with our credit purchases or cost of sales multiply with 365 days this ratio is also in days let's uh, use all these three formulas in our extract firstly all well, inventory days we were comparing inventory with cost of sales multiplying with 365 the inventory over here is 105 divided by 300 multiplying with 365 is giving us a figure of 127 days doing the same for 2018 we have got a 95 we have got a 95 of inventory and there were two Eighty. That's the cost of sales. Multiplying by three sixty-five is giving us one twenty-four days. So then the, it seems that the uh, uh, company Henrico is ma making such uh, assets of uh, selling such assets of nature, such nature which uh, needs to be kept uh, longer in inventory however uh, from when comparing 2018 with 2019 the number of days of inventory has increased which is showing that the company needs to focus in this area because inventory being held in our premises will mean they are the uh, uh, mean they are incurring a holding cost also the it uh, seems that the com uh, comparing to last year the inventory is not being turned into cash uh, s uh, s uh, sooner uh, <clears throat> not turned into cash sooner so this is again one of the factors which the company needs to focus it could see if, if left unchecked it could seriously have a negative consequences after that we have got receivable stays average receivable We have we have receivables over sales multiplying with 365 days now receivables involves uh, the for 2019 it is 150 and the sales figure is 500 multiplying it 365 we get 109 days doing the same for 2018 we have got a receivable of 145 and comparing it with the revenue of 4 comparing the revenue of 450 multiplying it with 365 is giving us 118 days now this ratio has improved it shows that the company is receiving more money quickly as compared to the last year the average days was 118 but in this year it was 109 quite a downfall with around 10 days difference uh, which shows that the company tends to receive perhaps they are giving a discount or anything like that they are receiving money more quickly as compared to the last year so we have more cash now in the premises at a particular time than last year which is a good sign
after that there will be a computing a last ratio for the liquidity ratios part which is our payable sphere excuse me these are payables and uh, we are comparing it with cost of sales and multiplying it with 365 the average payables for 2019 was 150 and the, and the cost of sales was 300 multiplying it to 365 will give us 182 days doing the same for 2018 is 145 over 280 that's payable over cost of sale multiplying with 365 is giving us 189 days now the this ratio is showing that we the creditor are taking uh, money sooner than later which is not a good part for we could have used at the extra credit year which we were getting last year here as a source of finance to support our sales however from the current ratio it can be clearly seen that the company is does not need to hold their payments to support their current assets part it have already sufficient resources to set up their liabilities so that's the whole the liquidity ratios for Henry Co. Uh, it seems there are there is not much movement in the ratio or in the liquidity ratio area and except for inventory it does not need to have a significant improvement in any of the areas it does not need to have a significant improvement in those areas however the inventory needs to be focused in some way to reduce its days that's the whole liquidity ratios analysis now let's move on to our next part which is Gearing and risk ratios. 